Hey guys, I'm back with another video. Um, today I'm going to show you how to connect Dialogflow, the Dialogflow backend, with a custom web app. So, in case you were wondering, okay, how can I put a chatbot front end on my website or host it myself? This, uh, yeah, this is an example of how to do it. So the, what I'm using here is uh, the project is called Dialogflow Web by Mishu Shakov. And the reason why I chose this is because it's, it's relatively lightweight and it is built on Vue.js, which I really like in the context of this project because, well, it's a very light framework and um, who needs a super heavy framework for a chatbot front end? So I think it's very, yeah, it solves, it matches the problem we're trying to solve. But still, it's a JavaScript framework and it has components, uh, which allows us to break everything down neatly. All right, so let's get started with this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to download it as a zip file, which is the easiest way to go. Going to put it here. Alright, it's downloaded. Um, I've got an old version here, which I'm going to delete. Alrighty. Cool, Dialogflow minus Webmaster. Ah, yeah, I'm going to go into the console. And then. I'm going to do npm install to install all the dependencies. At the same time, let's open this. Let's inspect the project in Atom. Oop. Fans going on. npm install is taking a lot of power. Okay. Atom. Where are you? Open. Alrighty. That's the project. Okay, let's look at the package.json. These are the main dependencies. So there is an API, AI, JavaScript library, and then we have the view dependencies here and we can see for the scripts we can run npm run dev and that will open a the webpack dev server view and it is pretty easy to set this up the the only thing that we need to do is in order to get it up and running to add our token here from dialogflow so while npm install is still running I'm going to my Dialogflow chatbot from the last couple of examples which is just about getting a name and let's look up the token okay you, you one thing to pay attention to is the uh, the front end the client still works only on the Dialogflow API version 1 so I've had to change this back um, from my last project so I just I just did this um, if you're watching one of the last examples I was, I was using uh, API version 2 but the way that authentication is handled has changed between those and so they're still in the prog prog um, in the process of updating the Vue.js frontend. Okay, so what I, I'm copying now the client access token, which is here, is part of API version one. Going back to Atom, I'm adding it here to the config, and that is pretty much it. Now we see that npm install is done. So I'm going to run the dev server. And it's openly a nice front end. And now let's give this a try. So the interaction is the same as from the last examples. So hi, hello, what's your name? 
Uh, once more, I'm going with a slightly exotic uh, first name it's to prompt for the confirmation here. Uh, can you confirm that this is your name? Yes, it is. Okay, I already pressed enter. It's a bit slow. Cool. Um, yeah, we got everything here. So we can see it was super easy to set up, which is great. And uh, I wanted to sh inspect, I wanted to show the API responses here, but it seems it hasn't locked them, so I'm just going to reload once more. Sorry about that. Oh, now the icons are missing. Hi. Okay, cool. So let's look an at an example API response. There we go. So I just wanted to show that the main the main uh, result from the API response is always here under the result part in the response. And uh, we can see that the parameter always comes back, which is great if we want to process it as part of a webhook or whatever we want to do in our front-end app. And also we can play around with the context here. You can see the context that I set up in the last videos. And then the main text response is here in here. So speech, which is technically supposed to be what... So since dialog flow and also this front end, which I, by the way, disabled, uh, also supports voice. That is supposed to be the voice answer, while these... Are so this is the text response. Um, so there is an array, and uh, let's look at what this looks like in the app. So everything is under one component currently. I'm just going to do this so it looks a bit nicer. Um, Let's quickly look at the JavaScript. So in Vue.js, JavaScript and HTML is in one file, which is good if you keep the components small, in my point of view. Uh, we, the API AI client from the JavaScript library is initialized here. We pass the access token here. Um, then what happens if I submit something to the chatbot, send it to the Dialogflow API. It, uh, there's a promise here and the callback pushes the response to an array which is called answers. And then the response is also handled. And if you remember what we just inspected in the API response here, it's checking, okay, is there the speech string, is it present? Or alternatively, the array that we looked at earlier, and then uh, what does this actually do? This is actually just about the speech response. So let's disregard that for now. And if we want to inspect how this is rendered, uh, we got to look at the answers. the answers array if we look for that the first thing we find is that if the answers array is zero we're showing a placeholder message which is now gone if I reload this it should come back since we don't have answers that's it hello ask me something to get started uh, which is actually loaded from the config locale strings here, as you can see. Cool. If answers is uh, has content, then this is where the content is rendered. So all the speech bubbles. If I put something here, then it rendered the speech bubbles. There's lots of stuff here around the. Google Assistant output, and um, so 
much richer content than just the speech bubbles. So the cards, carousels, uh, links, suggestions, chips. Uh, so to be honest, for the personal project that I'm, I was building, I didn't need any of that. So I literally just deleted all of that and I just kept the speech bubbles. Cool. Uh, that's it for this little run through. As you can, as you have seen, it's pretty easy to set this up and get started. And where you can go from there is customizing your chatbot, of course. And I hope to do some more future videos about that. Cool. Thanks for listening.